good morning. I want to show everyone how beautiful El Grullo's flower is. Look at this. The coloring on it. And this is the parent of Trisha. I came out this morning to see that Trinidad is still open. Quite lovely. Such a nice flower. Look at that. All right, I had to do one more quick video. These bees are just going absolutely bonkers right now. They are loving that pollen. Get it? Armando bud. Just found another bud. This one is called K. What's up guys? Just want to do a quick video on this one here. We got a rare day bloom. I came out last night and this bud had not opened and it did this morning so it's kind of odd. This is a white flesh variety called Unknown Road. It's self sterile but it does taste quite good. We have done reviews on it so you should check them out. But let's see I'm going to pollinate this and see if we can get another fruit. It's nice to see that we're still getting blooms this late in the year. We're going to have some dark star blooms tonight. We got one, two, three, maybe this one tomorrow night. Let's pollinate some dark star. Still have morning blooms. This is Hana, Hylocerus monocanthus. Check it out, we got a late flush of Armando buds. There's one here, we got another one right up there. Look at this beautiful unknown Guatemalan, October 19th, 45 degrees. We're going to have some flower buds on Halloween. What's up, guys? Just want to do a quick video, show you this really late season flower bloom that I have. It's pushing, but it's really undersized, and I think it's because of the cold weather. So we'll still try to pollinate it, but I have uh, low expectations on this. But this is called Trinidad. And it's a really beautiful dragon fruit that turns purple a bit on the skin. And uh, kind of like red Jaina. And uh, we still haven't got a fruit from it yet, but hopefully this one might take. I, like I said, I highly doubt it, but we'll see. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? What you're looking at here is Dark Star, and this is starting to form a really nice trellis top. We got several new points of growth coming in right at the ends here. This one has just got maybe five, six points coming out, same area. 
Got a couple big ones back here and several over on this branch. This produced fruit last year, but this year could be a really good season, so I'm hoping uh, for some nice development. All right, spring is here. So this type of dragon fruit is called Armando. It's a super slow grower and the fruit doesn't taste that good. I'm actually going to probably take it off this trellis and put something else there, but it is pushing a late season bloom, which is uh, pretty cool. But the weather is super cold. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I doubt it will actually produce a fruit. But it is cool to see these plants are still pushing blooms. And here we are in the middle of November. All right, have a good day. So we have some fruit that's set. That's just not going to make it. And it looks like it's just too cold right now. Too cold and too wet. Even though it's warm enough to produce flower buds, it's just too cold to get fruit. So these are done. And looks like this is the end of the season. Official end. There you go. But uh, the bees are still out. Out and about. Pollinating away. Hi y'all. Have a good day. What's up dragon fruit lovers? This is Scott and I just wanted to make a quick video here. A little update on this dragon fruit system we installed at my mom's house. And she had these uneven bars, gym bars that she wasn't using. So we decided to turn them into dragon fruit trellises. Here we got some dark star. I mean all these were really small. I made a video about six to eight months ago. And uh, you can see the progress if you go back. but. Just really good, awesome growth, looking amazing. This one's called, un sorry, this is the Thai white, white flesh. And then we got one called Unknown Road, which Paul found on the side of the road, literally. It's a uh, self-sterile white flesh. And then uh, we got Sugar Dragon. And all these are pushing new growth. Looking good. All right, guys, have a good day. Looks like Sugar Dragon's waking up for the spring. Got a nice trellis top forming, lots of new growth. Nice warm weather. Spring is here. Quang Ong Self Fertile, 2010. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Check this out. Here's an easy way to get rid of some of this rot. You see on this piece right here, we got rot right down here. I already did this one. Take a piece of string and zoom in on this real quick and you just run it along and you can just scoop out all that rot nice and clean and makes it easy. And then you come in and maybe put a little hydrogen peroxide on that and it should be good to go. All right, have a good day. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Check out this variety I trellised on this jacaranda tree. You can see it's already shooting roots out. It's grabbing on tight. And we got this big branch that's popping up over. And it's starting to grow again, springtime. Give you the full view. And if you don't have enough trellises, you need to just get crafty and put it on a tree 
And if it's the right tree, most likely it'll be very happy. All right, have a good day, guys. Here's some beautiful sugar dragon flower buds. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Check this one out. It's called K. This is a variety we got from Danny, who we featured on our channel many times. Expert dragon fruit grower. And this one topped the trellis last year. And as you can see, there's tons of new growth, which should promote a nice canopy. And so if you want to see the whole thing, check it out. All right, y'all. Have a good day. This variety is Bruni. It produces a beautiful white and purple flower, as you can see. And it's self-sterile, so you need a different pollen source, different type of dragon fruit, to set fruit on this beautiful plant. You can see the flower buds are really, really pretty. And it can take quite a bit of sun. It also blooms pretty early compared to other varieties. So that's Bruni. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Check this one out. I just finished this trellis right here. And we put in some Paul Thompson's 4S, which is a pretty hard one to find. And if you want to see more videos on other hard to find dragon fruit, hit the subscribe button for more. All right, have a great day. This is Paul Thompson's number seven. Very beautiful flowers. And I cross pollinated them last night. Really like the colors on this variety. Now we'll see what the fruit tastes like in just a few more weeks. Is it the same thing as Valdivia Roja? We'll find out. How many flower buds can you count on this old Asunta 2? What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Check this one out. This one's called Trinidad, and it's starting to shoot some new growth. Now, I had this one out in full sun, and it seemed to get really stressed out. One of the unique things about this variety is its skin will actually turn purple when it gets stressed a bit. And so I opted to take it off its trellis and reposition it underneath this tree, which has seemed to be making all the difference because now it's super green and super healthy and happy. So once again, Trinidad. All right, y'all, have a good day. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Check this one out. It's called Watermelon, and I got it from Leo, who owns Oceanside Dragon Fruit. And I got it as a cutting last season, put it on a trellis, and it has finally topped the trellis. So I'm excited to get a little fruit from this one certainly soon and see how it tastes sounds good huh watermelon all right have a good day 10 days ago i tipped and pruned back this edgar's baby here you can see these mature branches look what happened 10 days later 
they induce some flower buds. There's a flower bud there, flower bud there, some flower buds up here. So tipping your dragon fruit branches, especially if they're mature, can induce flower buds. Hey, this is Paul. It's 11 at night, and I'm gonna show you how I cross-pollinate this dragon fruit. So this is fresh pollen from five varieties or so. Cinnaspinas, Edgar's Baby, Nicaraguan Red, K1, and what else, Asunta. So I mixed up this fresh pollen, and all I had to do was pollinate the stigma just like that. And now I'm gonna collect some pollen and add it to the collection. Now I leave this overnight out on the counter, and then I put this into a tight piece of plastic, I guess you could say, and I store my fresh pollen in the refrigerator. So it's as easy as that. So there you go, that's how you pollinate a dragon fruit. Have a great night. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Check this one out. It's called Quang Yong Self Fertile. Now the mystery is, is some people say that this got renamed as American Beauty, but I don't know if that's been confirmed. So I got this one trellised up, and maybe we'll get a flower eventually, and a fruit, and we can compare. But the mystery continues. Maybe leave a comment and tell us if you know if Quang Young self fertile is actually American Beauty. And if you want to talk more dragon fruit, hit the subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. And 10 days ago, I did an episode on pruning and tipping your dragon fruit branches. And look at the results here 10 days later. Soul Kitchen White here has plenty of flower buds. It's like this on almost every mature branch. Now, in fact, I did this whole row here where I tipped and pruned them. And every single one that's mature has flower buds. Now, look at this Edgar's baby. Up here, we have flower buds. Here, here, and basically everywhere. Now, if you have a young, immature plant that you tip like this one, you're just going to get new, new branches, new growth. This Edgar variety here has zero flower buds because it's just too young. So here's a couple cuttings that I want to root while they fruit. So first up, from the Leo Manual collection, Pink Condor. It's got plenty of plant mass and this beautiful flower bud. So let's see if this will open and produce a fruit while that roots. I also have a really large physical graffiti here and it has a nice fruit. We had to remove this to move the plant so I'm going to root this one, and hopefully that fruit will still grow. We'll find out. So I'm going to use some of this from Vermistera, and water it lightly, and we'll see how it goes.
This is Yala number one. Some fruit still ripening. So there's three things I check for to see if I can pick my dragon fruit. Now first, I check the skin color. You can see this American Beauty has started to turn color. That's a good indicator that this fruit is ripe. However, some dragon fruit varieties, their skin stays green when they're ripe. So the best indicator to me is to look at the cone. And I look for any cracks here. It's always gonna start cracking here. I see one crack forming there, which shows that this is ripe. And then the third thing I do is the wiggle test, which is probably the most useful one. And you want to do, for the wiggle test, you wanna go up and down, but you also wanna see if it twists left to right. So this fruit I'm gonna leave on for one or two more days. It's really close to being ripe, and then I'm gonna enjoy it. So that's how you check to see if your dragon fruit is ripe. Have a good day. And you can see here's a few different Guatemalan varieties, and you can see just how similar the fruit looks. This one's condor here. And this one is my friend Leo's eBay self fertile. So let's focus on American Beauty and let's see how it tastes. And it's just a beautiful fruit. Look at this lovely, lovely flesh. Mmm absolutely delicious the texture of it is nice and smooth it's juicy i describe it as refreshing man just a lovely fruit definitely in my top five
pollen. This does take a little bit of time, but you know, you don't need a whole lot. But I like to get, I like to get as much as I can. That's pretty good. And then I'm just gonna simply take a paintbrush. We're just gonna dab the end in here. Boom. So this is actually the female part of the flower. And then this is the, the male part of the flower right here. I hope it stays in focus, but it might not have, but you just wanna go ahead and dab that. Do it a few times if you want. And that's it. And that is pollinated. And today we're going to talk about aphids. If you could see them right here on this flower bud, they are having a little party there. Now, they can be found on flower buds, on new branches, on new growth, and they really like to be right here on the bracts of fruit. And you can see the Argentine ants are protecting them and harvesting their honeydew. So they are pretty vile pests for dragon fruit, and the, once they get on a few varieties, they really start to spread quickly. And that can be really annoying. And I believe that if it gets bad enough that some of the flower buds could abort, maybe something like this, if I don't treat it, you could see all of the aphids on there. So what I like to do is use this water and soap treatment. And you can see I just blast them and it takes care of them really, really quickly. So this is Dr. Bronner, Dr. Bronner's Peppermint Castile Soap. Now you're looking at a piece of dragon fruit that's been dehydrated and sat in the refrigerator for eight to 10 years, believe it or not. And my friend Leo dared me to eat some of it and I did, it tasted like really sweet fruit leather. He also told me to grow some of these seeds and see if they're viable. So I put them in water and soaked them for about a week and cleaned them up. And then I planted them in this topsoil and look at that, we have success. So these, seeds sat in a refrigerator in a piece of dehydrated fruit for a minimum of eight years according to leo so a pretty long time so i'm excited to grow those seedlings now just to let you know after they grow that's their first stage then they're going to look like this so these are some different hybrid seedlings see there's some variability in them and then about a year from now they'll look like this if you choose to grow them true from seed. Now we are having unique weather, so I bet it will get higher. I've heard this will break into the 20s, low 20s. In my opinion, this is really, really sweet, lovely texture. Kind of has some of the flavors that remind me in some of the Asuntas I've tasted, believe it or not. This is a delicious fruit. I would give this a 9 out of 10. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Hey, check this out. It's only 2 o'clock in the afternoon and these guys are ready to open. So we got three dark star blooms right here on one branch. We're gonna get those pollinated tonight and then got one extra one hanging out over here. And they're all gonna go tonight, all four. All right guys, have a great night. You can see how juicy this dragon fruit variety is. And although this is only a 16.7, 
I think anything 16 and above tastes great. And again, this wheel breaks into the about 20. So let's go ahead and give it a shot and see how it tastes today. Wonderful, delicious. This one's a bit more tart. I probably could have left it on the plant for another few days. Probably would have increased the sugar content of this fruit. But it's just a delicate, beautiful flavored fruit. Kind of has a watermelon texture and a really delicious kind of a berry vibe, which is really, really pleasant. And look at that beautiful fruit, 3S Red Flesh. So thank you, Leo, my dear friend that passed on. And thank you, Manny, for giving this to Leo. And let's see how it tastes. That's delicious. Wow. Kind of like Dark Star or Purple Haze. It is very similar to its sister seedlings, but this is a nice large fruit, really pretty flesh. Very juicy. Moist. The seed to flesh ratio is nice. No uh, earthiness detected in the seeds. 13 and 0.5, 13 and a half is on the lower end of the bricks, in my opinion. And that's why it just tastes kind of lemony, I guess is a good description. I mean, it's got some sweetness. It's definitely not earthy. So it's got a nice finish. The seeds are not earthy in flavor. It's kind of like a slight lemony vibe. Melon and lemon. I'm liking it more and more as I eat it. But again, I'm going to give this like a 6 out of 10. There's much better dragon fruit out there than Soul Kitchen White. Good morning, fellow dragon fruit growers. This is Paul, and look at this beautiful flower. This, this is Varieties Hana. And I got it at Spicy Exotics about two years ago. Now, this plant is very vigorous, and I, th I think it would probably produce flowers in about one season, one year, I should say, if you treat it right. And what happened to ours is I gave it too much sunlight, and it got really damaged from sunburn. So now I move it under this part sun environment and look at how happy it is. And what's really interesting about this variety is you can see the pinkish tones in that flower. It's really rare for dragon fruit. It's really pink and then it fades to white. 
It's our first bee this morning. Now this variety is Hylocerus monocanthus and it was collected along the road to Hana in Maui. Look at how beautiful this flower is. This is Kaslau or K. Similar to Lisa and Sabra, but a little different. Now here is a very fast growing plant. This is Jade Red. It's just over a year old and it's set to fruit. And the flower is absolutely stunning on this one. Look at it. It's a beautiful flower. Now here is Vietnamese Jaina. It's taken a while. It's like three or four years, three years old. And it's finally set some fruit. So I'm excited to try this white flesh fruit to see if it's very good. So we don't have any problem pollinating in the yeah. morning, but, um, like, yeah. but you know, if, if you say, well, that could get you bigger fruit, I think where our bigger fruit comes from will be just really paying attention to our pollen mix. And we can manage that. We do cover our flowers um, because we do fight with the bees for the pollen. Mm -hmm. So we had, um, yeah, I saw some bags out there. Yeah. yeah we, bags. maybe, um, it was August. Um, around August 20th, we had a 15,000 count bloom, which it, it's <laughs> a lot. Count that? That's crazy. Yeah. And it's a lot to pollinate. And the other problem is you think, oh, we well, would have a lot of pollen. The bees came in so heavy that every single flower had at least 20 bees and the pollen would be gone like yeah. that. Yeah. And so when you fight, you think, oh, you have a ton. And when, when you start to panic that you have a third of your field not pollinated yeah. and you don't have any pollen left, it's, it's not a great feeling. signs to look for to see if your dragon fruit is ripe. Now this is a beautiful dark star here and you can see the first thing that I look at, and I've learned this from Wallace Ranch, is the cone right here. And I look for any cracks at all. So this is not cracked, it's on there still a little tight. So this can spend some more time on the branches. What I mean by cracked cone is over here is a good example. Here's a purple haze. If you look really carefully right above my finger, you can see that little crack, see it? a little hint of pink and that shows you that this is going to split open and the ants are going to get in there pretty quick so i like to cut them or pick them when i see a split like that now another thing you can do i have to show over here is the wiggle test that does work well but that's a little vague and you can see this trisha is starting to turn color but the wiggle test is you can see it's loose but also you can twist back and forth this thing hasn't even fully opened and we already got a few pollinators. They're getting deep. By morning time, there will be nothing left.
look at this beautiful cinnaspinus and there's a hole in the cone and the ants are eating it. That's annoying. Any day now, Laverne Pink. Oh yes. This is a dragon fruit that's been growing up a queen palm for over two years now. I just wanted to see what would happen. So, look at how long these branches are. I find this very interesting. So it sent all its energy up this one branch here. It's grown plenty of epiphytic roots. And it continues. This is six feet. About nine feet. It's still going. To about 14 or 15 feet or so, which is here. And it even continues on. So it's about a 20 foot branch. So one of the things, um, I had gone to another production farm and what struck me was their plant was here. So they were on a kind of more of a trellis system but same concept, and but their plant was here and they didn't have anything going on here. It was just a, a yeah, clean just, core. Mm -hmm. So I came back to Julio and I said, you know, it was more like when you, when you go to train your plant, where do you want your energy to go? And so we did, we, at the end of last season and beginning of this season, we cut anything that was on the bottom and trying to just keep one lead. So you want one brand, yeah. one a yeah. palm tree effect, like you a said. A palm tree okay. effect. And you notice that in, in Proust's production, and it's just the best route to go. Yeah, yeah I think it's okay. good for plant management and it, your airflow and you're keeping your you're keeping your 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 production here mm -hmm. on the plant. I mean, because we will get blooms anywhere where there's it's possible. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah where there's a thorn, there. there can be a, a bloom. This is something I've noticed about natural mystic is that the cone splits when it's hot during our heat waves, even though the fruit's not quite ripe. That's just what Natural Mystic likes to do. Now check this out. This is a little branch that has turned into a flower bud. So this is gonna become a flower and a fruit. How exciting. So 17.1, again, I have seen it bricks at the 18 and a half as you see here. So I picked this one a little bit early, which will mean it's gonna be slightly more tart which is okay by me. Mmm. Really delicious fruit. Juicy like a Guatemalan, but definitely it packs more flavor in my opinion. Mmm. Kind of some berry vibe to it, a slight berry mixed with grape. Mmm. I really like this fruit. And I like the plant because it's just so productive. The drawback is that it is self-sterile. So it does require cross-pollination in my experience so far. Got a great sugar dragon harvest today. All on the same branch. You got one, two, three, four. Five, six, sorry about the wind, have a good day. All right, these beautiful blooms are on red Jaina. Really wonderful red fleshed self-sterile fruit. It's a high low series polyrhizus hybrid. You can see the bees just love it. Really nice, big, beautiful flowers. I like this variety a lot. It's one of my favorite red fleshed fruit. It does get a little bit sensitive to the cold though. And it is a little spiny, so be careful. And today I'm going to share my experience with this interesting dragon fruit that I got from my friends at Wallace Ranch. Now you can see this is not photoshopped like some people implied. This is something that does occur every now and then. This is the only 
branch that turned into a fruit at Wallace Ranch. So out of 20,000 pounds of dragon fruit, this is the only one. And they weren't 100% sure, but they're pretty, they thought it was delight. So I'm really excited to do a review on this fruit. It's very interesting to me. And I guess I'll try to save this branch just for fun. So look at that. A little bit of the coloring of the ripeness into the flesh of this. So I'll try to root this just to see what happens. I find that really interesting. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? I got this unknown variety of dragon fruit growing up this banana tree and it finally blooms so it's exciting we get to find out perhaps what kind this is the mystery continues so check this out if you don't cover your dragon fruit flowers the bees will take all the pollen that's why I pollinate at night because look there's no pollen left in these anthers. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Hey, check this one out. This one's called Frankie's Red, and I already got it to root. It's a pretty nice long cutting, and today I came out there's a bud right there. First Frankie's red bud. There's a storm coming in, so I'm sorry it's super windy. Y'all have a good day. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? So we got a nice ripe fruit here. This is the one we're calling Trinidad, but it might be red gina, but the fruit is so tiny that I'm not sure. So maybe it's just the first fruit that this one has ever produced, this cutting has ever produced, so might be a little on the small side, so we'll see what happens in the future, but look at that color. Really, really cool. And then there's another bud popping up right here. I don't know if you can see it right there, so we'll get another fruit here soon. All right, y'all, have a good day. I'm so excited to eat this little Pride of Fallbrook. I'll have it later. Hmm. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Got a mystery bloom here. This thing is gigantic. Probably the biggest I've seen in my yard this season. You can see, uh, just for frame of reference, put my arm next to it. All right, y'all. Look at all of these Desert King seedling flower buds. I'm really excited to try this variety. But it's gonna be a few more months. It's what we call a winter crop because the fruit are going to be ripe in the winter. Very spiny variety. And then I have some yellow Columbiana over here, which are a yellow skin variety. All right, take care. Here are some of the late Leo Manuel's hybrids, Selenoceres megalanthus crossed with Hyloceres costarocensis. He had over 20 different pots of them, and there's definitely variations. And the bees are really happy here this morning. Here's a fruit. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Just gonna do a quick update on some of the buds and fruit we have coming in. Right now, this fall, this one is called K. Sugar Dragon. Dark Star. Two more Trinidad buds. Here's one of the largest dragon fruit I've grown this year, and I don't even know what it is. Look at this beast. George Emmerich, number eight. This one's called Red Leonardo, and the flower is so big, I can't wait. Another mystery bud, we'll see. This one's called Armando, also a very large flower. Maria Rosa, 
This fruit's called K2, and it's awesome. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? It's uh, September here in San Diego, and we're still getting dragon fruit buds. So I'm going to show you a few of the different varieties. This one is Thai White. Trinidad. Dark Star. K1. Sugar Dragon. Valdivia Roja. Frankie's Red. Nitzel. Armando. Delight. Now this beautiful variety is a Guatemalan and it's Namibia Orange. You can see it's turning ripe. I'm gonna pick this today. Let's go see what else is ripe. And look at this one, this is Jade Red. And it's definitely ripe. I will pick this when I get home from work today. Look at this beautiful fruit, Vietnamese Jaina. This one is definitely ripe as well. I will pick it today. This is Robles Red. You can see it's got a crack in the cone, so it's definitely ripe. I'm gonna harvest this one today. So um, probably the best advice that was given to me when I bought the ranch was somebody said, Neva fruit rots. Always know where your fruit is going. So this fruit does rot. It does, it can have a good shelf life. However, <laughs> you have a skin life issue. And, um, and so, and each variety is different. So we, when we go into production, uh, what we would like to see most people who are dragon fruit aficionados, they say, oh, I want a big fruit. Okay. That's very common. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody's never bought a dragon fruit, a big organic dragon fruit could be $20 in the market. Yeah. So, you know, oh, is that what somebody, their first try at a dragon fruit, is that what they're going to want to pay? So we actually had pushback from big fruit um, that three quarter pound acceptable, but getting the big fruits may not be until somebody, you know, frequented that market and really. What's up dragon fruit lovers. Hey, check this out. There's a big spider on this cutting right here. I'll zoom in. You see him? It's a big orb weaver. Okay, I'll, I'll touch him with this stick here. There you go. Pretty cool. Alright, y'all have a good day. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Looks like we're gonna fight some bees here to get this Maria Rosa pollinated. I almost missed it. I came out this morning and realized it opened. So let's get that one done. There we go. Super pretty. Look at that. All right, y'all. Have a good day. This is Sinatum orange dragon it's definitely got some selenoceres megalanthus dna in it and legend has it is that it's a hybrid of selenoceres megalanthus with hyloceres undatus so this is the first flower sure is beautiful What's up, dragon fruit lovers? This is uh, my mature sugar dragon. As you can see, there's no fruit left on it. But as we enter October, you can see that there are actually new buds coming in. So we got two there, a bunch over here, there's a couple up in the top here, over there. So as we go into October, we're still getting buds. And this would be, I guess, about the fourth flush on this plant. So that's a good sign of a nice healthy plant. 
when you're getting multiple runs of buds. And I guess the fruit would be uh, ripe in November. So looks like we're going to have fruit way late into the season this year. All right, y'all. Have a good day. This is Kislau. It's a very large Hylocerus costarocensis. Beautiful flower. Here's a flower bud. And here's the fruit. Very beautiful looking fruit. And the flower is very, very fragrant. This is Diego's Desert King Seedling. Beautiful bloom. What's up dragon fruit lovers? We'll do a quick show and tell on all the flowers that opened last night. This one is called Trinidad and as you can see the bees are just loving it. This one is George Emmerich number eight and it was massive and a really beautiful flower. Paul thinks it might be uh, Orahona related. This one's called K, another really big flower. Still got a few bees in there doing work here's a mystery bud not sure what it is but we'll find out soon here's another mystery bud excited to find out what kind of dragon fruit we got here and here was uh, the last one this is a big fruit set Thai white all right y'all have a great day Donovan's Laverne Red, Mr. Wu, Voodoo Child, Red Jaina, two pollen sources, two different looking fruit, San Ignacio, Pine Island Purple, probably a rename, Pink Panther, Maria Fusia. Kuslau or K. Purple Haze. This is Fullerton. Elk Creek Unknown, number one. Look at those bracts. These are Brunei. This is Dark Star. Paul Thompson, 7S. Sugar Dragon. And this is American Beauty. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? It's a misty morning here, which isn't great for collecting pollen or pollinating anything. But we did have some flowers open last night. This one is called Dark Star. Here's another mystery bloom. Not sure what this is, but I have it trellised on this tree. And hopefully we'll get a fruit, figure it out. The bee is sure enjoying it, though. Here's another Trinidad bloom. Really pretty flower. And then here's the last one. I have it trellised on this Mexican fan palm. And it finally flowered. So, awesome. Y'all have a good day. This is Cotton Candy 1-10. Seedling sister to Connie G. Queen Denarius, Celeste, and more. Trisha's already closed up. It's only 9 a.m. This is San Ignacio. Big, beautiful flower. And a good red fleshed fruit. These are pink condor. Definitely different than regular condor. Very sweet variety. 
This beautiful flower is Diego's Desert King Seedling. Look at the size of it. Really big, beautiful flower. This is what it looks like the day before it opens. This beautiful flower is Florida Sweet. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Here it is, November 2nd. We're still harvesting dragon fruit. There's one right there amongst these uh, banana trees here. And you gotta see how big this one is. Here's my fist right next to it. This is a monster unknown. I know it's white flesh, but I'm not really sure exactly what kind. But I will open that today. All right, y'all. Have a great day. Here is a very rare dragon fruit variety from the late Leo Manuel, a hybrid he made of Hylocerus undatus crossed with Hylocerus costarocensis. And look at that, the fruit's just about ripe. And give it a few more days because it goes up, to, up and down, but not side to side quite well enough yet. But I'm really excited to try this hybrid from the late Leo Manuel. Branches look pretty interesting too, huh? This is cotton candy. 1-10 It's gonna bloom tonight And here is cotton candy it Smells great It's very beautiful But not as beautiful as some of its sister seedlings This is jade red and it's gonna open tonight. Let's come back in a couple hours and we'll take a good look at it. Okay, here it is, Jade Red. What's up, dragon fruit lovers? Looks like we got our last bloom of the season here. It's gonna open tonight. And this one is Sugar Dragon, which was our first bloom of the season. So seems fitting, but uh, we'll get some fruit in November and that closes out. All right, y'all have a good day. Say bye, Richard. Let's check out some fruit ripening today. Up first, this is Sabra. Look at the size of it. It's a red flesh variety. It's delicious. These beautiful fruit are both red Jaina, and you can see that they're splitting. So it's time to pick them. Also, I used two pollen sources, and you can see how different the fruit look. All right, these are Mr. Wu. Look at how beautiful they are, and they are ready to be picked today. Now this monster is almost ripe. It's Donovan's Laverne Red. Look at how big it is. I can't wait to try it. And these are physical graffiti. Excellent, tasty variety. I recommend it. And these delicious fruit are purple haze. An excellent variety.